In this short tutorial, we'll be looking at reaction profile diagrams, or sometimes called energy level diagrams, and looking at how we can use them to show exothermic and endothermic reactions. Usually, you're given an equation, as we can see here, A plus B gives C and D, and you would be told the delta H, or the energy change, the heat change of the reaction. Now we can see here that the delta H of this reaction is minus 150 kilojoules per mole. Now that negative value tells us that the reaction is exothermic. So it's going to lose energy. Heat energy is going to be released by the reaction. And so hopefully what we should see in our diagram is that our products will have less energy than our reactants. So let's have a look at how it will draw that. So we need the axes of our graph. And our two axes here will be energy, apologies for my terrible handwriting, and this will be the time of the reaction. So in this one, this will be kilojoules per mole, and we could say that this time might be seconds. I mean, to start with our reactants, so that's the first line on our graph. And then we know that because the reaction is exothermic, the delta H is negative, that our products need to have less energy than our reactants. So if this is A plus B, our reactants, and these are C and D, our products. So to join these two up, we know we've got to put some energy in because we need to break all the bonds between A and B. So energy goes into the reaction and then energy is released as the new bonds making C and D are made. We then see there's a top of the curve that we can see here. Now at the top of this curve, this, if we extend the line between A and B, this amount of energy we need to put in to start the reaction is called the activation energy or the EA of the reaction. What happens when we get to activation energy is that A and B completely separate into atoms. They then rearrange and that then forms C and D releasing energy as the new bonds are formed. If we want to work out and see how much energy is released in the reaction, all we do is we take the difference between our reactants A and B and our products C and D, and that is then the delta H of the reaction. So because, sorry, just to summarize, that because our reaction is exothermic, our products, C and D, must have less energy than our reactants, A and B, because overall, in an exothermic reaction, the products will have less energy than the reactants. In this second example, we're needing to sketch a reaction profile for the following reaction, where X plus 2Y2 gives Z. And we can see here that the delta H is plus positive 80 kilojoules per mole. Now this means the opposite of before, that the reaction is endothermic. So from this, we know that energy is absorbed into the reaction and our products will have more energy than our reactants. So if we start by sketching out our axes, and again, energy, kilojoules per mole, and then time, and we can say seconds again. So if we start off with our reactants, now our reactants here, as we said, are x plus 2y2, showing that y is diatomic, and there are two moles of them. And our product, z, must have, because the reaction is endothermic, more energy than the reactants are starting with. So here is Z. And just like before, we need to put some energy in to reach the activation energy, and then 
energy will be released as new bonds are formed, making Z. So if we go up, curve at the activation energy coming down to Z. Now just as before, we can put that line in here. And then the line and the difference between the two, between, sorry, our reactants and the amount of energy needed to start the reaction is our activation energy. Interestingly, unlike in the example before, we've got X will separate into atoms of X plus four atoms of Y. All of the bonds between the Y molecules will be broken now. Because we've only got one X, we still only have one X atom. But now we have two Y2, which gives us four atoms of Y. Each of those atoms will completely separate. And as we can see in the, in the um, equation there, that we have Z, and that's our product. Because the reaction is endothermic, plus 80 kilojoules per mole, Z needs to have more energy than X and Y. To work out what the overall energy change is, all we need to do is take the difference here, and this is our delta H, and because Z has more energy than X and Y, the delta H is positive, showing an endothermic reaction. Heat energy has been absorbed into the reaction. So, hopefully... That makes a little more sense to you now, and you can use those rules if you're ever asked to sketch a reaction profile for a reaction in an examination question.